I'm glad he didn't say it's not. I, I took care of 99 percent of it. You take care of one percent. And that's a good deal, isn't it? That sounds like a good deal to anybody. But you know what? If it's up, if one percent is up to us, that means 100 percent is up to us, because if we withhold our one percent, then we miss out on the whole 99 percent that Jesus did. That's why Jesus didn't do 99 percent to pay for your sins. He did 100 percent. There's no death more painful than crucifixion. That's why the Romans invented it, because it's slow, it's agonizing, it's death by suffocation. Crucifixion in and of itself is not it's not the nails in Jesus hands or the nails in his feet or the spear in his side that killed him. It's suffocation that killed him. It's actually a broken heart that killed him because he had to breathe so heavily just to get breath. He had to put all the pressure on his feet and on his hands just to catch his next breath that he eventually his heart broke and he suffocated. That's what crucifixion did to people. And it's described in Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 14. I'm not trying to gross anybody out here. I'm not trying to be somber or negative here. I hope you understand this is the great news. This is Jesus did this for us. So this would not have to happen to us. It says in Isaiah 52, verse 14, the margin cross reference Bible, just as many were amazed over him and princes on his account shuddered. They were astonished and appalled, amazed and frightened. His visage or his image, his his presence was so marred, unlike to a man and his form, unlike to the sons of man. So deformed was his appearance not to be a man and his figure no longer resembled a man. That's crucifixion. But when you add crucifixion is not just the painful death and the slow process of it, add to it. Plus, he knew it was coming. Not only was he did he have to endure all that pain, he also knew it was coming. That's even more painful. Plus, one of his best friends betrayed him. Even more pain. Plus, all of the people of Israel turned against him. Plus, he was a victim of the Roman Empire's cruelty. Plus, he was completely innocent. Plus, everybody knew it. Plus, they chose to release a criminal instead of him, knowing how guilty the criminal was and knowing how innocent Jesus was. This is the worst death, the worst punishment. So in the same way that you cannot write a more tragic story about his death, you can also. You could not write a more beautiful story about his love. There is no more beautiful love story than the story of Jesus crucifixion. As gruesome as it is, God wants you to get the message of how deep, how wide, how far, how high his love goes for you and for me, that he would pay the full price for you and for me. It's a story of love because it's a story of freeing you from everything that you've ever been afraid of. There is no life more beautiful than a life with Jesus. In Christ, in the bosom of the father. Plus, you know, he's making a home for you in heaven. Plus, you know, he's coming back for you. Plus. He now considers you his best friend. Plus, you are now no longer a victim of this world's system. No longer a victim of Adam's sin. Plus, you are now completely innocent and found not guilty. Plus, there's no condemnation. 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. Plus, you are now the righteousness of God. Plus, all the demons in hell and in earth know. All of them know you are the righteousness of God. Plus, you are now released from whatever has tormented you. Plus, you are now healed and you can be healed from all the trauma that you've experienced in your life. Plus, he gives you a family where love will never end, where love will never cease, where love will never fail. Plus, He's given you all his authority to rule over the demons, the pain, the sickness, the worry, the anxiety, the fears. Behold, I give you authority, Jesus said, to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Plus, Nothing shall be able to injure you, hurt you or harm you. Plus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Plus, nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter eight, verse thirty one. If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is he who condemns? Christ Jesus, is he who died. Yes, rather, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. For who will separate us from the love of God? Woo! If you can't not read this chapter and not get excited Amen. at some point, if verse 31 doesn't do it for you, verse 32 is sure to do it for you. If verse 32 doesn't do it for you, verse 33 has got to get you. If verse 33 doesn't get to you, verse 34 is going to change your life forever. If verse 34 doesn't get to you, look at what verse 35 says. Who will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ? Who will separate us from love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Woo! These are all, you know, these are all rhetorical questions, right? He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? The point is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> rhetorical means the answer is obvious. If God be for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter who's against us because no weapon formed against us can prosper Amen. because of Jesus, because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I wonder if we would just believe this for a moment, how happy we would become. For I am convinced. Listen to what he says. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers. The gospel of man's holiness is a fallacy. Our holiness is in Christ, just like our righteousness is in Christ. As you meditate on what Jesus did for you and feed yourself the word of God, you begin to become a healthy person that is able to form healthy habits and is able to be strong in areas where you were once weak. And God is cool and patient to give you time. If God was in such a hurry to fix you, why did he wait from the time Adam 
was created 4000 years before he sent Jesus to the earth. How could God wait 4000 years before he fixed Adam's mistake? 4000 people. We're not talking about 40 minutes. We're not talking about four years. We're talking about 4000 years of human history passed from Adam and Eve till Jesus came. There are 6000 years that of human history that has existed. Whatever people think about the millions of years before that, the gap theory of Genesis chapter one, verse one, Genesis chapter one, verse two. I'm now I'm getting really over my head and yours. So let me back it up. There's only 6000 years of human history that have existed on this earth. And it was 2000 years ago. Jesus came 4000 years late. Because of Adam's sin. 4000 years late. So you don't think he's going to be patient with you while you struggle with some thought that you've been obsessing you or some habit you're trying to kick or some habit you don't even want to kick and you start pretend you start leaving, staying away from church because I don't want to get in the there and just feel all the guilt, then then stop feeling guilty because Jesus already paid for it. You don't you don't get you don't get guilt free because you don't do anything wrong. You get guilt free because Jesus washed it all away. He's cleansed us from a guilty conscience. Hebrews chapter nine and ten tell us. Oh, I wish I could get this across to you, but I'm just going to do my best. Galatians 2:20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but the life that I now live. In, but Christ lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I've been crucified with Christ. The cross is the proof of God's love. It's the demonstration of God's love. It's the manifestation of God's love. And when Jesus died on the cross, you died on the cross. You died spiritually when Jesus died spiritually. You just haven't died physically yet. But when you do die physically, you will be united with Christ in heaven because you're already seated with him in heaven. You're already seated with him in heavenly places. And I can't explain all of that. But I can tell you this is that there is not going to be ever a remembrance. God doesn't have any memory of your sins. Hebrews chapter eight, verse 12 says, and your sins and your iniquities, he will remember no more. He remembered people's sins under the old covenant, but under the new covenant, he doesn't remember your sins anymore because the blood of Jesus is that good. The blood of Jesus is that thorough. The blood of Jesus is that powerful. The blood of Jesus that we worship to and that we sing about and we talk about. It really is as the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. It really is powerful enough to remove all of our sins and to remove the guilt from them. When it says I have been crucified with Christ in Galatians 2:20, it means we have been judged with Christ. We have been condemned with Christ. We have been cast out with Christ. We have been stripped naked with Christ. We have been nailed to the cross with Christ. When we see in the Bible what happened to Jesus, that was Jesus doing that on our behalf. He didn't need to do it for himself. He did it on our behalf. So if it was only him that died, then the price is not paid. But because he died and we died with him because he became what we were so that we could become what he was before he became what we were. He became sin for us that we would be made the righteousness of God. Second Corinthians 521 tells us, listen to this. Second Corinthians 521. He who knew no sin, he never sinned. He was made to be sin for us. He didn't he didn't become sin for himself. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He didn't need to become the righteousness of God. He already was the righteousness of God. But he did that so that we could become the righteousness of God, which means to be in right standing with God, to stand with God, to stand in God's presence without reference to your sin, to stand in God's presence without fear, 
without shame, without inferiority, without condemnation, and without guilt. I will not stand before my Heavenly Father in any bit of shame, not because I haven't failed and not because I won't fail again, but I will stand before my Heavenly Father because I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ and you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ too. And it has nothing to do with what you've done and it has everything to do with what he's already done. Can anybody say amen? It literally says in Isaiah 53, verse 10, yet it pleased Jehovah to bruise him. It pleased God to crush him. Why? Because God's eternal justice had to be honored. In every society, there is a justice system because every human being knows that there are some things that are just and some things that are not just. And everyone in this world understands justice. Everyone. You cannot find a culture. No matter how educated or uneducated, you will never find a culture that doesn't believe in justice. And it's true because there is justice in this world and because God is a just God. But justice demands a price to be paid and you don't have the account to cover it. Non sufficient funds, people. NSF. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It pleased him to crush him. The devil didn't crush Jesus. This was God's own doing. God did this to Jesus so that your sins could never do it to you. He put him to grief because he rendered himself as a guilt offering. How could these things be written hundreds of years before Jesus came? Because God knows what he's doing and he's right on time. Let's stand together and let's get ready to receive Holy Communion, I want you to believe that by his stripes you are healed. I can't emphasize enough to you. It's already done. It's not getting done when we eat the bread and drink the cup. It's not getting done when we confess our sins. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. You're either embracing it and saying yes, amen. We don't even have to say yes. God says yes. We say amen. I'm just agreeing with God. Amen just means let it be. Mm, The Beatles had that one right, too. I want you to know there's real things happen when we take communion because we're. We're saying, yeah, we're saying amen, we're saying amen. I've been in a challenging, abusive relationship for years. Someone said have children that have overcome so much alongside me. I've never heard the word of God delivered as I have after being connected to Life Changers Church online. I never understood communion or the power behind it. I do now. I give thanks to the father for connecting me with this teaching that has been so real and has renewed my understanding. The blood of Jesus paid my entire price. I am now able to recognize my emotions, hold them accountable, no longer be a slave to them. I'm no longer in need of antidepressants due to the incredible revelation of love that I never realized. I know now that God has made this revelation so available to us and I'm forever one with Jesus. Thank you so very much, life changers. I say amen to that because I need that. He became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. He was cursed so that we could be blessed. He was weak so that we could be strong. He suffered shame so we could experience his glory. He was condemned so that we could be forgiven. He was made sick in order that healing would come to us. He was cast out of God's presence so that we would be welcomed in to God's presence. 
He is our righteousness. He is our peace. He is our Savior. Let's receive his precious body. I want you to say, Jesus did it all. It's already done. My debts fully paid. My sentence fully served. My victory fully won. I am the righteousness of God because of the blood of Jesus. I am dead with him. I shall live with him. It is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God and the faith of the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Nothing can separate me. No one can separate me from the love of God. Let's receive this beautiful love. Hallelujah.